We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello again and welcome to the show which has been described as funnier than Julius Caesar's Gallic Wars Book One. <laughs> not necessarily funnier than Book Two. We have, as usual, two teams. On my left, Barry Crower and Graham Garden. <laughs> On my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. Well, as in most panel games, I ask them to do fatuous things, and they then do them. So we start now with the first round, which is called Double Feature. This round takes as its starting point the poverty of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films, and I want you to hear the resulting titles, and I shall award points for anything that approaches humour. We're going to start with uh, Graham Garden. Um, oh, bless him. I just heard they're going to make a remake starring Minnie Mouse of Cabaret and Taxi Driver. I'm going to call it Mini Cab Driver. <laughs> so it's a start, isn't it? <laughs> oh, bless him. <laughs> it's, it's, what a it's trooper. Him. It's nothing. Uh, it's yes, a, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, uh, film oh, I like the fiction. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> film industry are plundering the, uh, <laughs> the stage at the West End, in fact, and they're... Uh, now doing a film, um, have taken Otherwise Engaged and The Bed Before Yesterday and No Sex Please Were British, and it's to be called No More Sex Please Were Otherwise Engaged in The Bed Before Yesterday. <laughs> Barry, let's have yours. I've got a four-hander, Humph. I have combined <laughs> Butterfield 8 with Mash and the battleship for Temkin, and the Desperados, and I've got buttered mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Rushton. I've got uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, King Kong, and Murder at the Vicarage, and they just called it, What the Hell Was That in a Dog Collar? <laughs> stars a bionic lassie and Lord Goodman. <laughs> I give it three weeks. Thank you. <laughs> well, interpreting these hieroglyphics that I've written down here, it seems that Tim and Willie have five and Graham and Barry have nine. Don't ask me why. Uh, this is the point where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme so that I can give the teams time to think of silly names for people arriving at the footballer's ball. <laughs> so start thinking, teams, the footballer's ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the point at which we're all overcome with the feeling that we've been here before. So this is the round in which uh, each team will give the other one a topic for a blues, which oh. they must then improvise, accompanied by Colin Sell at the piano. And uh, Graham and Barry, will you give a blues for Tim and Willie? Yes, we'll give them the blues, the Queen's Jubilee Blues. The Queen's <laughs> Jubilee Blues. Can't be funny about the Queen's Jubilee Ball. up this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thinking about the Jubilee. Not the tune, but the Jubilee. Trying to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it 1952? Or was it 1953? <laughs> anyway, you better make the most of it, Queenie. Queenie, <laughs> baby! singing God save our gracious shake of Araby <laughs> I've had to deduct two points there for Lay's Majesty <laughs> Tim and Tim and I Willie never will you give, did what will you give Graham <laughs> will you give Graham and Barry yes um, yes uh, have to. topical one uh Cold in the nose, blues. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I get my vitamin C going. Woke up 
this morning <laughs> With a terrible cold, you bet You bet, you bet, you bet, you bet, you bet I went to my dog dog And you'll note I purposely didn't go to see my vet <laughs> Never again He said drink a large whiskey after a hot bath Baby, I ain't drunk this hot bath yet <laughs> Very good. And in that round, believe it or not, the scores have been reversed. It's now uh, <laughs> Tim and Willie who have nine and Graham and Barry who've got five. <laughs> now we have a new game, so I'm going to have to concentrate. In this round, one team has to announce a piece of good news and the others have to provide the accompanying bad news. We then go back to the first team who have to see the good side and then over to the other team who look at the bad side then back to the other side to look at the good side, and then over to... and so on, until we die of apathy. Tim and Willie, we'll start with you. Uh, the good news first. Here is the good news. Uh, the pound is now worth $2.60. Uh, and here's the bad news. The dollar is only worth three cents. <laughs> Good news, three cents is worth three Mongolian yaks. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, uh, the bad news is the Mongolian yak has just been taken to the vet to be devalued. <laughs> Here, I think, is the good news... Um, Yes, the vet was James Herriot, and he's written a book about it. Great! And uh, the bad news is the book costs two dollars sixty. <laughs> Barry and Graham, will you start the next round with the good, the good news first? Um, the good news: rail fares are going down. Ah, bad news: just gone up again. <laughs> <coughs> not a pill. Graham, imagine this. Pill this that one. Tim or Willie, can that. you start another one with the good news? Uh, the good news is uh, my picture is in the paper today. Uh, don't you? Probably don't read the same paper. The bad <laughs> news <laughs> is in the sun. The good news of that is it's on page three of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> bad news is he's got his back to the camera. <laughs> The good news is you should see page four. <laughs> I can dream. Yeah. Right, I, I buzz me buzzer to finish that one. Barry and Graham, we can start one more round with good news. Right, the good news is we're all giving a dinner party tonight. Uh, bad news is Rod Stewart's coming. <laughs> <laughs> The good news is he just rung up to say he can't make it. <laughs> uh, the bad news, though, is he's coming on later and staying for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good news being that he said he's not bringing Brit Eckley. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news is that he is bringing Keith Moon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the good news is we're overinsured. <laughs> oh. Uh. <laughs> The bad I, the matches. I think I just heard the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> who, who buzzed my buzzer? I you, did. Lo you lose marks for buzzing the buzzer. Oh, I didn't. They did. The teams, ladies and gentlemen, oh. at the end of that round. <laughs> and the reason that I asked for that unsolicited applause is that they've both drawn level. They both have nine. <laughs> We have a, a familiar round now, which is sound charades. One team has to make noises, and the other team has to guess oh. what they mean. Oh. And uh, you in the audience here in the studio are let into the secret, and you can help by applauding when they're getting warmer and by blowing filthy raspberries when they're not getting warmer. <laughs> it says you're doing the other thing, but let's, let's be open about it. 
And uh, those of you at home will be informed by uh, a mystery voice, which will remain a mystery till the end of the programme and for quite a long time after it, <laughs> as to what the, the charade they're doing. Graham and Barry, you're going to perform the first one. And is yours, uh, we have to uh, tell the other team, is yours a book, a play, a film, or a what? A what? No, it's actually, it's a film. A film. A film. The mystery voice at home will tell you what it is, and our audience is being shown on a board. <laughs> Return of a man called Horse. Return of a man called Horse. <laughs> I'll now tell you... The audience here has been uh, informed of the title and the mystery voice has told you at home and uh, uh, Graham and Barry, are you ready to perform your show? Yeah, how more many than syllables? ready, we've gone we, past we, we it. Will you tell them how many syllables? It is... Oh, how many a, syllables? It's a film made up of six words, one of which is the indefinite article. Excellent. The indefinite article. <laughs> and the other five aren't. <laughs> Are you ready? That, sorry. Yes. I'm ready. Right. You're doing the whole thing, sorry. Oh, you? shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yeah. part of it, Barry? Yeah. <laughs> We're doing the whole thing. We're doing the whole thing. This is a knock at the door. That was the door opening. <laughs> Return oh. of the man called Horse. <laughs> Brilliant. I hadn't even done my bit. No, I may no, say no, that no, I'm no, awarding no, marks no. now, not only as to whether the other side guesses correctly, but uh, the, the time in which they take to, to guess it. Oh, and that's a new rule. Tim took rather a long time on that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good rule. He only gets three. Tim and Willie, you're going to perform a charade now. Can you tell us, first of all, whether it's a book, a film, or what? It's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a play. It's a play. Listeners at home, the mystery voice will tell you what it is. A bedful of foreigners. A bedful of foreigners. Right. <laughs> Everyone in the audience here knows what it is, so... How many Tim words? And Willie, how many words? Uh, f four words. What are what they? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> it never leaves you. Okay, Tim. We're going to and do Willie. the whole thing together, Hump, if that's all right with you. Uh, the sooner the better. All at once, and it was some jollification. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yes. Oh. Give us a bit of the blanket, you bastard. Oh. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that is full of lore. Hey, them bastards. Oh, hey, oh. The pillow. Oh, no, do, do be el pote. Oh, hey. Oh. 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 as well. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, That's after right. that, B Barry and Graham will now try and guess what that... Or uh, Graham, as they're sometimes um, known. He's got it. All right, it's a tricky one, this. From what you're saying, it sounds to me as if Terry Scott and June Whitfield are in the cast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the way we were saying it. Gave it away, it's the way you tell yeah. them, yeah. yeah. It's a bed full of foreigners. Oh! <laughs> Now we hurry on to another charade in which uh, Graham and Barry will perform. First of all, I'd better find out if it's a play or a book or a film or a what. It's uh, a film. Uh, it's a film, I think, ad um, adapted from a book, to be fair. Yeah. A film adapted from a book. Yeah. Mr. Three Boyce, words. tell them at home. Dog Day Afternoon. Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, the audience in the studio knows what it is. Uh, do you want any more information, Tim and Willie? Uh, it's three to... words, is it? Now you're doing it all at we're once. We're going to do the three words in order. Uh, One after the other. You ready? <laughs> well, here it comes, folks. <laughs> 24 hours. P.M. <laughs> I didn't hear the last bit, did you? Yet another return of a man called Horse. <laughs> 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 Roof, 24 hours, and we didn't hear the last bit. P.M. Ah. Buck. Dog day. Mm, afternoon. Yeah. Dog day afternoon. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> Old bleachy head Very strikes good. again. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait while I reset the stopwatch. Now, Tim and Willie, you have a final charade, and this is a what? Film, play, what? It's a film. A film. Audience Two words. Two words. Mystery Both Voice scenes. will tell you at home what it is. 
High society. High society. It's a film, two words, and we'd like to do the two together. Carry on. Oh, all right. Now you're ready, Willie? Yes. Okay, here we go. I say, Duchess, would you like some more marijuana on your resale? Yeah. Ed, chill out. I'd like um, a little uh, cocaine shredded yeah. on it. Yes, I'm going to ask it for the glass, you know. Oh, you have it. Hello, baby. Oh, yeah. Hello, Duchess. 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 Hello, Oh, gracious. Um, I think it's high society. Oh. oh. Yes. Very good. And at the end of that round, Graham and Barry have slipped back to five. <laughs> we go on to the next round, which is a new one, and it's called Guess the Weight of the Chairman. In this round, the two In this round, the two teams are allowed to confer. And they have to come up with their approximation of the chairman's weight. And all I can say is, watch it. <laughs> Marks are going to be awarded in this one, incidentally, for accuracy or tact. <laughs> We're going to start with Graham and Barry. Well, Barry, you write down yours secretly. Yes. Mm -hmm. My first reaction is, of course, you weigh a little ton. <laughs> <laughs> but my second reaction is to withdraw from that. <laughs> Uh, I remember you with a beard hump, so I've got to allow for that. Uh, <laughs> we'll take his trumpet into account. 20, yes, 22 kilowatts, which being converted... <laughs> I'm doing old money now, you understand. <laughs> a straight... Yeah. I, I've got 13.2, uh, um, yeah. Oh, you've got 13.2? Yes. Kilogram. I'll, I'll be tactful and <laughs> I'll crawl to him. Um... 12.13 in old money. 12.13. I say 13 too. You say 12.13. That's a grand total of 25.15. <laughs> this is augmented, you understand. So that's your, that's your considered yeah. opinion. Right, we'll go over to the other team now, Tim and Willie. Um, Humphrey, this is a bit personal, and if oh. the listeners have put their fingers over their ears for a second, um, do we count the leg? Uh, oh, shabby, shabby. Give, shabby. Or, give or take oh, a leg. Come uh, on. Yeah. You As can, I can see, you can't thrown everything. In, we, uh, everything right. we obviously lost a lot of weight. If people at home could only see this slim young man yeah. here, <laughs> um, I would say about yeah. what? I don't know. L with trumpet? No. And mute. Uh, Eleven it's stone optimal. four. Eleven stone four. Not not a not a penny more. <laughs> Willie. What a wonderful figure. Isn't it? <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> I think. It's um, proportion. What, see, what was it? Charles Atlas after being a seven stone weakling? About eleven. Uh, uh, eleven four stone, stone weakling. Six stone weakling. Yes. Think about eleven two, I think. Eleven two, a pretty good victory. Well, we've got two eleven twos, and uh, that's near enough. We've gone now to. Uh, <laughs> gone now to uh, a round, uh, uh, a new round, which is extraordinarily like an old round we used to play. The old round was called Censored Songs, and the new one is called New Censored Songs. The only difference. <laughs> The only difference from the old round is that now, instead of censoring one song, our panellists will work on a medley from a well-known musical. And you'll get the hang of it uh, as it goes along. I shouldn't be surprised. We start with you, Barry and Graham, and your musical is The King and I. Colin Sell will provide the accompaniment, of course. I have dreamed that you're a lovely... <laughs> I have dreamed what a you'll be We in a shadow We from the moon Our a few and over too soon Whenever I feel up, <laughs> I hold my erect and whistle a happy tune so no one will suspect I'm up. <laughs> While in my shoes, I strike a careless pose 
and whistle a happy tune, and no one ever knows I'm a... <laughs> the result of this deception is very strange to tell, for when I, the people I, I, myself as well. <laughs> Don't your lovers, whatever you do, don't because I'm a all of my memories are happy tonight. I've had a of my own. I've had a of my own like yours. Yeah, that's got to put you in the lead. <laughs> right. I'm willing to go straight on. We can't follow that. <laughs> but we go over now to Tim and Willie, because uh, they're... And, and your, your medley has got to come from South Pacific. <laughs> oh, dear. There is nothing like a... Nothing in the world. There is nothing you can... That is anything like a bloody Mary is the girl I... <laughs> Some enchanted evening You may see a strange... You may be a stranger Across a crowded room And, and somehow you know Welcome you know even then that somewhere you'll turn again and again. And then we wrote, I'm gonna wash that right out of my hair. <laughs> and then we wrote, <laughs> a hundred and one pounds of fun. That's my little <laughs> get a load of tonight. And speaking of my only 60 inches high, every inch is packed with dynamite. I'm as, as cancer in August. I'm as normal as blueberry pie. As no more a smart little girl with no I have found me a wonderful I am in a conventional dither With a conventional in my eye And you will note there's a in my throat When I speak of that wonderful Marvellous. Very good. Yeah. We didn't get the piano till half past six. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's got to put you in the lead. So that, Thank you. Uh, the score at the end of that uh, round is uh, Graham and Barry, 106, Tim and Willie, 107, Colin Sell, 108. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the point in the programme that I've been looking forward to because I take a back seat. Uh, so that I can uh, listen enchanted to the team's announcements of the arrivals at the footballers' ball. Who's oh, good open, heavens! Who's, who's going to open the bidding? Mr. and Mrs. Marsh and their bionic son, Rod Knee. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'd like to welcome. Oh, they're just going. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, Ernest, Muriel, and Nicholas had just arrived, but now we've got to say. Bye, Ern, Mew, Nick. Oh. Oh. Well, well, they're going. It's all right. They won't be around well, long. Will you welcome, please, now? I'm welcome. <laughs> all the way from Scotland, Mr and Mrs Champions and their diminutive son, We Arthur Champions. Oh. <laughs> Mr and Mrs Athletic with their son rather prone to a high, hearty greeting. Aloha! Athletic. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Welcome, please, well, two delightful ladies. 
the Bristol cities, you can... Uh, <laughs> you can hold them because they like their Uddersfield. <laughs> oh. Bump the bundle. Yeah. Prepare to pair your lower tackles <laughs> for Mr. and Mrs. Sheffield United and their chef, Hilda Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Demicles and their Scottish <laughs> West Country son, Hamilton Acker Demicles. <laughs> Please will you welcome, please no. will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. Field and their policewoman daughter, known as Anne Field, the cop, <laughs> and her pyromaniac brother, best known as Arson Al. <laughs> Here's an attraction, trips round the bay with an ex-Prime Minister royalty welcome. Captain Ted Heath and his crew, Alexandra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there comes Dick Barton with his stupid brother, Dumb Barton. <laughs> hey! And a Sicilian visitor, Mr. and Mrs. Kastarovas and their son, Don Kastarovas. <laughs> Speaking of Sicily, right back here in England, will you welcome <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Palace and their thieving son, Chris Till Palace. <laughs> and on a personal note, please will you welcome Gwinners will be Derby County this season if there's any justice in the world, and their daughter, Lee Gwinners, will be Derby County this season if there's any justice in the world. I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that I've been deducting marks for groans, and both teams are back exactly where they started half an hour ago. The two teams being Barry Crown and Graham Garden. <laughs> Kimball Taylor and Willie Rushton. <laughs> we'll be back next time. Until then, goodbye from all of us. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to the panel game, recently described as the show we'd most like to work on by the union of panel beaters and body crushers. <laughs> Two teams oppose each other in the ensuing farce. They are on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. The rules are quite simple. The teams do what I tell them. And in this first round, uh, the aim is to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and close the series in one line. Colin Sell will play the theme music or something very like it, and I shall award points for bad taste. Barry, uh, you put the final word to the generation game. Nice to see you, to see you. <laughs> Willie, your one is the quest. No. I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Garden. <laughs> Graham, will you uh, put the last sentence to the Duchess of Duke Street? <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe you've met Sir Charles Forte. <laughs> <laughs> Right, on to the next round without a backward glance. 
Incidentally, this is dead. where I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme. Uh, and I'm going to announce it now in order to give the teams time to think of silly names for people arriving at the politician's ball. Oh. The politician's ball. And, of course, all of you listening at home will join in on this one. Bags are Fat hot we care. <laughs> we have a round now which is, the title of which is self-explanatory. And it's a very concise title. Words of one song to tune oh. of another. Oh. I want each team to sing the words of one song to the tune of another. And the Quite tune will be that. divided, of course, on the piano by Colin Sell. Willie Rushton, will you sing I Belong to, to Glasgow to the tune of Deutschland über Alles? <laughs> I don't know either. I belong to Glasgow, dear old Glasgow town. But what's the matter with Glasgow? For it's going round and round and round, and only a common old as anyone can see But when I get a couple of drinks on a Saturday Class gonna be lost to me Well, I've got to give you ten marks after that ovation. Thank you. Graham, you're next. Will you sing I Feel Pretty That's to the it. tune of Beethoven's, <laughs> Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? <laughs> I feel pretty, oh so pretty, I feel pretty and witty and bright, and I pity any girl who isn't me tonight, I feel charming, oh so charming, it's alarming how charming I feel. Uh, like Tim Brooke Taylor, your words are the hokey cokey, and the song is As Long As He Needs Me. <laughs> Will you put your left arm out? Hear the left arm in, the left arm out, and shake it all out. <laughs> With a cokey cokey. That's what it's all about. See, you put your right arm out, right arm in, and under the chin, and out, and out. Another ten marks there. Barry, your words are, where did you get that hat? And the melody you have to sing it to is the Dam Busters March. <laughs> Follow the bouncing bomb. <laughs> Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that hat? It's a bit of a bit of a bit of a Well, as you heard, that round was an absolute walkover for Barry Crown. <laughs> I've got another new one now. This is a nice one, this one. It's a, it's a round that's called Strip Quiz. <laughs> and it's uh, based on the old-fashioned principle, principles of strip poker, which you no doubt know. I ask questions of the panellists. <laughs> I shall ask questions of the panellists. And Tim Brooks is lagging himself. Wrong, <laughs> Each time they get one wrong, they have to sacrifice one garment. And I should tell you that in order to be absolutely fair, the team are now... <laughs> the team are now wearing shirts, trousers, and shoes and socks, which will count as one garment. Anything after that will remain to be seen. <laughs> oh, that fuss over such a little thing. Now then. Self-criticism is very... <laughs> Attention, please, because I'm going to go very fast here, and these are quite tricky questions. Barry, you first. What is the capital of England? London. Willie, what is one and one? Two. Graham, what is the name of the Queen of England? Elizabeth. 
Tim, what is the pharmacopoeial name for turpentine? <laughs> Nigel? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, the word is terabinthina. Did <laughs> anybody lose... still wore those? Tim loses his shirt. <laughs> Tim loses his shirt on that one, but still there's everything to play for. <laughs> Does it cross my heart, Tim? No, yes, it Tension is. Tension piece for the next round. <laughs> Lifts and holds. Barry. Yes. What's your name? Uh, Barry. Willie, what's Barry's name? Barry mainly. <laughs> Graham, what's Willie's name? Willie. Tim, what is the name of the author of the play The Captain Is Not a Miss, first produced in 1836? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. They do still wear those. Well, we to the next round, please, Humphrey. You're a very good chairman, and can we go on to the next round, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim, you've lost your socks and shoes there, but still, it's early days, early days yet. You can see where the tan right, stops. The, next round, next round. Barry, how many fingers do you have on your left hand? Uh, my left hand, oh, that's a tricky one. Um, four, and one thumb. That's, that's, I'll, I'll accept that answer. Your... Yes. Willie, how many fingers do you have on your right hand? I agree. Oh. Graham, <laughs> Graham, how many fingers do you have on both hands together? Eight and two thumbs. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Tim, how many letters... <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor, how many letters are there in the philological word meaning the development of a glide vowel between two <laughs> consonants? Forty-nine. Forty-nine, you said. I'm sorry. Mm. The answer is eleven. I said eleven. Get him off. Get him off. <laughs> I'll accept 11 from you. Can you tell me what the word is? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's only three. You wanted to know what it means, Hump? No, I'll tell you what. I, you, you, I'm sorry, you've lost that one. The word is Svarabhakti. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> Get him off. And uh, Tim Brooke Taylor now has to remove his trousers and only has his underpants left. God bless him, Michael. <laughs> And we come to the climactic round. Rusty, is it? <laughs> so would you if you had any... Barry. <laughs> yes. Attention to the crowd, please. Barry, name a four-legged animal. Uh, horse. Willie, name a creature which flies. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> I'll accept that. Graham, name a creature with a beak. Oh. Only one beak. Only one beak. Uh, sparrow. Quite oh, right. Good. good. Yes. Yes. Tim, name a crab of the group which is characterised by a triangular <laughs> cephalothorax with projecting rostrum. Can I help you with the laces? <laughs> Anthony Wedgwood Ben. <laughs> close, but not close enough. The, the, the answer is oxyrinch. Well, that's and at this point, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Brooke Taylor, having lost, has to remove his underpants. Can I turn off my I thought it was a bit of an anticlimax. All trailer and no big picture. <laughs> Here's a familiar round which uh, has become a favourite with us all. The team's going to make up a poem. It's called Adley Poem, in fact, the round. They're going to make up a poem and each team member must keep going until I press the buzzer and then a member of the opposing team must take over with the next line. This goes on until the natural artistic conclusion is reached or until none of us can stand it any longer. <laughs> I'm going to give you the first line of a poem. Barry Cryer, I want you to follow up on this one. On an ice floe in the Arctic, I saw a penguin pass. <laughs> <laughs> on an ice floe in the Arctic, I saw a penguin pass, sure of tread and fleet of foot, though the ice it twere of glass. <laughs> Hello there, little penguin. Do you know Derek Nimmo? I cried. <laughs> Willie? <laughs> I don't know Derek Nimmo, said the penguin, though I've tried. <laughs> I communicate quite often with the aforesaid Nimmo. Graham. As often as I can, that is, among this ice and snow. <laughs> well, he is not irregular upon this frosty shore. Him? <laughs> he cannot afford to travel because he is rather poor. 
Papa perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, I must say to you, I am a penguin bright. I live up in the Arctic Circle, where the sky, <laughs> where it is always n -n 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 night. I have to go on with this poem. I can see it's true, but in the Arctic, and very well you do it, sir. I cried, would I were like you, a poetess. A rhyme maker and a penguin just are you. I wish I could make poems and then the sky would be blue, <laughs> the sun was gold and all around the lights did shine and then... Excuse me, but do you know a rhyme for half past three? <laughs> Now, then, this next round is called Sing Along, and in this round, each panellist has to sing along with a disc. Once the tune and the tempo have been established, the sound of the disc will disappear, and the panellist will be left on his own. After an embarrassing pause, the disc will come back, and the panellist scores points if he's still with it. We're going to start this round now with Willie Rushton. Do we have some words? Have Give us some words. Have, I've got some words. Oh, I have some I've words some here words. for you. Yeah. These are the words of early one morning... If you pass that to Willie, and Willie, I want you to sing this one along with Nana Muscuri. <laughs> By her four eyes. <laughs> Can't hear you, dear. Here one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a young missing in the garden, valley below. Oh, don't deceive me, oh, never leave Cos she's foreign, could you use her paw Do try, woman Remember the vows that you made to me truly Remember how tenderly you nestled close to me Gay is the garland, fresh are the roses I count from the garden to bind over thee Here I now wander alone as I wander Why did you leave me now not to sigh and complain I asked of the roses Roses. Why should I be forsaken? Why must I hear in sorrow? <laughs> Graham Garden, you're going to do the next one. Your song is When I'm Cleaning Windows, and you have to sing along with oh. Guess Who. George for me. <laughs> <laughs> Go cleaning windows, turning on this bob for a nosy parker. It's an interesting job. Now it's a job that just suits me. A window cleaner you would be if you can see what I can see when I'm cleaning windows in my room. Oh. It's not written down. <laughs> Tight, very close to the paper. Oh, there's only moving couples he's on about. I've only got in my profession, I work hard. We know that. <laughs> 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 this is a residual with fallout. They'll be coming in now. I'm counting. Okay. I'm counting. Go on with what? In my profession, I work hard, but I'll never stop. I'll climb this blinking ladder till I get right to the top. The blushing bride, she looks divine. The bridegroom, he is doing fine. I'd rather have this job than mine. And I'm, I'm cleaning windows. <laughs> <laughs> he fought the BBC and won. I don't, I don't have enough money. Tim Brooke Taylor. Not at all, didn't he? Terrific. <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor, yours is a bit an easy one. She loves you, accompanying the Beatles. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah. You think you lost your love? <laughs> well, I saw her, yeah. 
yesterday It's you she's thinking of And she told me what to say yay. God, he's old. She said she loves you And you know that can't be bad Yes, she loves you And you know you should be glad <laughs> She said on. She said, yes. you hurt us. How does it go on there? She said, you hurt us. And she's almost lost her hand. And she says she knows you're not the hurting kind. She says she loves you and she knows that It'll can't be, be a bad. Bloody miracle if you don't yes, she loves you and you know you Lovely. should be glad. Ooh. She loves you, she loves you. And you should be glad. Ooh. She loves you. Oh, that is unfair. Very, Very good, Tim. There were four uh, of them. <laughs> Very. Yeah. So, bang. And they could sing. <laughs> Never mind, you've got full marks for that. Barry Cryer, see what you can do with the Lincolnshire poacher. Five, five Hear the words. Five. And you've got to sing along with... Uh, this, this one comes from... Uh, an, an album called Tony Jacklin Swings. <laughs> sing along with Tony Jacklin. I was bound an apprentice in famous Lincolnshire For well I served my master for more than seven years Till I took up to poaching as you shall quickly hear Delight on a shiny night in the season of the year. For such twiddles as I don't know, as me and my companions were setting off a snare. Here comes a car. Twas then we <laughs> spied a gamekeeper, for him we did not care. For we can wrestle and fight, my boys, and jump or anywhere. Oh, <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. She loves you, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling that that round puts uh, Willie and Tim in an unassailable position with 16, with uh, Barry and Graham oh, come on. lagging a little bit behind at 24. We have oh, now the very, very well. point in the programme where I listen enraptured to the announcements from the team of the arrivals at the politicians' ball. Good heavens, the doors have just swung open, and there are framed in the doorway Mr. and Mrs. Seats, with their daughter, Margie Nell Seats. <laughs> what a shame, because she was coming in later. <laughs> However, they swung open again. <laughs> and here, will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Tingvoter and their daughter, Flo Tingvoter. Oh. They oh. themselves arrived a little earlier than <laughs> There are many other. <laughs> will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Troll Roll. And their son, Alec Troll Roll. <laughs> the doors have swung a further eight percent to the right. And here come Mr. and Mrs. Enoch Pole and their unlikely offspring, Black Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Over there by the Polynesian bar, good heavens, it's Mr. and Mrs. Tickle Broadcast. <laughs> Where their parrot who likes a good night out, party Polly Tickle Broadcast. <laughs> A very similar lady was about to arrive. <laughs> However, stayed at home. <laughs> However, please, will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. Sist Influence and their son Mark Sist Influence. <laughs> We're in the cabaret tonight. That popular Latin American group lost deposit. <laughs> And now, kicking hell out of a dumb waiter, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Thatcher, and their children, known as the I.I. I. Thatcher lot. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ricky, and good heavens, their son has just popped out and whizzed back again, now known as the first return, Billy Ricky. <laughs> Will you suspend your belief, please, for one moment? And welcome from Scotland, Mr. Macratic Vote and Mrs. Macratic Vote, and their daughter, Free Democratic Vote. 
They've come a long way. <laughs> you I spot oh, over there, standing just beside Tony Benn and his elder brother, Big Ben. A visitor, a visitor from Scotland to the debating chamber, Wall Sack. <laughs> There seems to be an anti-Scottish no, feeling here. I was here. mistaken. I was mistaken. <laughs> no, no, it's somebody else altogether. It's homosexual Bill. <laughs> With his Queen's speech. No. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wright, with their jazz playing <laughs> agent, theatrical of that ilk, son, 10% swing Tudor Wright. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tory Vote have arrived, and their daughter Mandy Tory Vote. <laughs> no, won't you stay? <laughs> no, I won't. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on the menu tonight. The last waltz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on, the, on the menu tonight, you may be interested to hear, is a portion of that cold seabird that nobody is afraid of, the chill turn none dreads. <laughs> Time has come to say... Mr. and Mrs. Festo and their son, Manny. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Stir of the Environment and their daughter, Minnie. Ah. <laughs> Not to mention Mr. and Mrs. T-Whip and their father, Pa T-Whip. <laughs> Don't let's mention any of them. <laughs> On behalf of uh, the two teams, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden and uh, Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor, from us, till next time, goodbye. Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, which can be best be described as a game for masochists devised by a sadist. Two teams oppose each other. They are on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton. <laughs> Too much. Rules of this game are very simple. The teams do what I tell them, and as chairman, I'm always right. So we start this week now with a, a game called Word for Word. In this round, one of the members of a team says a word, and his partner must say another word, totally unconnected with the first, and we carry on like that. The other, the other team may challenge and try and prove a connection. Now, the scoring on this is important. I score one mark per word until a correct challenge, when the challenging side takes over. Two rounds each side, so that each player... Oh, there's nothing to do with you. Right. I'm going to give you a word to start you off. Graham, your word is button. Aardvark. <laughs> Too smooth. Tim challenged that. Aardvarks are very silent. <coughs> I'll, I'll accept that, yes. yes well, thank you. Huh? <laughs> right. Tim, Tim you, you have the privilege of starting this next one. Incidentally... Uh, you, you have to go uh, from one team to another, so you have to pass the word to Willie and, and Willie has to pass one back. I have a challenge there from... Who's that from? It's from me. I didn't know that. So can you we didn't. have a point? <laughs> Good. Excellent. Excellent. I'll second another, that. You lose another mark for uh, not knowing no. the rules. <laughs> Tim, do you... That's, it, that's a challenge also from... Uh, who's that from? No, from not me, from, from me. Yes. From Graham again. Uh, I know the rules now, so can I have a mark back? <laughs> Another one gone for interrupting. Now, Tim, <laughs> between you and Willie, and your word is button. Clog. Garbage. Daffodils. Booze. Surgical belt. <laughs> Pump. Gerbil. 
bottle. I have a, 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 a challenge there from Barry. Uh, making a gerbil in a bottle is a very old pastime. It replaced, Damn. It replaced <laughs> ships years ago. Foiled a I idea. knew there was a connection. I've got one on my mantelpiece. Barry, it's your turn to start now, and it's between you and Graham, and the other side have to challenge. Your word is button. <laughs> Africa. Man. <laughs> No, no connection there no at all. <laughs> no. uh, lettuce. Gromit. <laughs> Lace. Thespian. I have a challenge from Willie Rushton. Famed thespian Sir Adrian Lace, who played the role of Lady Macbeth for Very many good. years. In, uh, that that was only the stage the name, I'm sorry. That wasn't real name at all. No. No, no, no. Also, well, we have a bit of confusion there. I shall put this to the audience. From your applause, I will know what to do. Silence. Right, we've got it. I take back my... No, we have one more round of that. One more round of that. And, Willie, you're going to start. And your word is fly. Kneecap. <laughs> Ashtray. Barometer. <laughs> Bell. Ear plug. Yeah, challenge from Graham Garden. Well, I think earplug and bell have a, a connection definitely there. If, if, if you were assailed by very noisy earplugs, you'd stuff a pair of bells in your ear. Right. <laughs> My word, yes. You Even at this world. early stage, the scores reached an interesting point, and I go on to a point where now I introduce a round that's played at the end of the programme, and uh, I give the teams time now to think of silly names for people arriving at the Astronomer's Ball. The people arriving at the Astronomer's oh, great. Ball. Okay, team no starting. We have a, a blues round now. For this round, <laughs> each team gives the other team a topic for a blues, which on which they must then improvise, accompanied, of course, by Colin Sell at the piano. Front row. Graham and Barry, will you give Tim and Willie their subject, please? Uh, while they're tearing bits of paper, listeners, <laughs> and discarding them, uh, the British Leyland blues we would quite like. <laughs> Starts. Oh, no starts. No, no. There you go. I went down to the pub for a chat with a barmaid and a game of darts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I really did, truly did, yeah. I complained about the British motor car industry volubly. <laughs> and she said. It's the same round here, dearie. They've all down tools and I can't get the parts. Saucy little devil. Oh, dreadful. Terrible. Dreadful. Kneecaps is connected with ashtrays. Now then, Tim right. and Willie, if you can remember your lines, will you give Graham and Barry a chance to, uh, uh, I mean, a, a topic for a blues? Newspapers. Oh, but Jeannie Polly, me. Oh, but Jeannie Betty, Betty Boy. Oh, yes, it is. Hold on, I'll eat it down. I will eat it down. Hang it on, eat it down. <laughs> this is a difficult one, man. Well, it's it. gunshot. Bid you to set up. That's why I feel blue. <laughs> and at this point, the score is Graham and Barry, eight and a half and Tim and Willie, 12 and three quarters. <laughs> I have a challenge there from no, Tim. It's not a challenge, it's a question. I'm trying to think of astronomers. Uh, can we mention Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hump. Give me a chance to introduce my brother, with which I shall censor anything which doesn't read my approval. Now, we're going to play the old-fashioned parlour game of sardines. 
For oh. this, one of the panellists has to hide and the others try to find him. <laughs> when they find him, they hide with him. Now, you, you in the audience can help by indicating when they're getting warm by your applause and when they're getting colder by groans. So I hope you'll help there. Now, Graham Garden, you're going to hide and the others will count to ten and, and then look. start looking. And they won't look. Hiding their Are they hiding their eyes? Right. They're all They're just not listening. <laughs> Are you ready, Graham? No. Ah, oh, that's a clue. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, it's one of them five, trick ones. Six. Ready. Seven, eight. Nine. It is one of them. Ten. Trick ones. Coming. All right. <laughs> You're bothering, are you? Barry Cryer is now fine Graham. <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor is now fine Graham. He's hiding with him. That only Hello, leaves Tim. Willie Rushton. <laughs> Excuse me, is this the... Oh, Graham! <laughs> Well, now they're all hiding. I suppose I'd better get them back, otherwise other chairmen of panel games will want to do the same thing. So come on back, teams. We go on to the next round. Come on back. Damn good radio. Those of you who've been listening to that thrilling game at home, I should tell you that uh, Graham was hiding on the fifth floor of the post office tower. That's right. <laughs> right. Now we have a game called tag wrestling, and in this round I'm going to give each team <laughs> give each team the payoff of a story, and I shall then start one of you off telling a story to fit your punchline. And then when I feel like it, I shall press my buzzer, and a member from the opposing team will have to take up the story, but make it fit his punchline. You understand it, do you? More than I do. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give Graham and Barry their punchline now, and your punchline is as follows. It's a rice pudding, cried the policeman, waving his trombone. <laughs> Heard it. <laughs> and Tim and Willie, are you ready for yours? I just yours? waving. <clears throat> waving, <clears throat> trombone. Okay. Yep. Tim and Willie, yours is... The queen disappeared into the bog. Very. Bright orange from head to foot. <laughs> Don't this know goes against one. the grain, Hump. I'm sorry. All right. You both got your punch lines. And to start working towards yours, Graham and Barry, will you start off now? Graham Garden. It was a bright day for the Metropolitan Police when Chris Barber joined their ranks. <laughs> he was... <laughs> He was giving a little concert in the Metropolitan Police Canteen over a cup of tea, which was being shared by several hundred sergeants and... Willie Rushton. There is, perhaps, in the whole of Southern Ireland, no more grisly sight than a dead trombonist. <laughs> <laughs> it was to Southern Ireland that Ellery Queen, a famed detective, set off to solve the amazing case of the stab trombonist and the bog. Barry. We'll be telling you all about this next week, but uh, <laughs> tonight it's Chris Barber in the police. In the canteen, where of course they took truncheon vouchers, Chris <laughs> was sitting, talking to his mate. His mate said, Chris, look so mussy, what are you doing here? He said, I'm engaged. Tim, why am I saying look so mussy when I should be saying whoops dearie? Oh, you right old queen, he said. Why? Why? Are you, why are you getting that orange squash from the uh, 
from the canteen. Why, he said? Why? Why am I getting that character now? Better. Why am I getting it? You ask me why? Why? This is him, <laughs> listeners. Turning to Pinsy Barber, he said, you're sweet. To which, it's a rice pudding, cried the policeman, <laughs> waving his trombone. Good heavens. No. Yes! 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 yes. <laughs> a massacre. But Graham and Barry have to call it... Graham and Barry have to forfeit four marks there for catching the chairman unawares. So I'm going to give them another set of taglines oh. now. Oh, We're going to play right. another round of that. And this one, Graham and Barry, your punchline. It turned out to be the female contortionist who put a ferret in the surgical boot. He doesn't get a penny extra for this, you know. Turn up, put a ferret. It is ferret, isn't it, Hump? That's right. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been silly. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and Willie, here's yours. Ready? Yes. Right. <laughs> You've cut me off, screamed the vicar. Sorry. <laughs> we were cut off at the moment. You've cut me off, screamed who? The vicar. Well, he would. <laughs> Dismounting from his pogo stick. <laughs> Just Humph always has a vicar in his yes, stories, yeah. doesn't he? It's funny, that. Very Freudian. Yeah. Eaton days, you know. Back to the background, yes. Tim and Willie, you're going to start now towards your, fun, your tagline. Well, <laughs> whichever you like. It's a hard pogoing from the vicarage to the telephone box at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> but the vicar set off with some vigour down the hill towards the telephone box. <laughs> oh. Graham Garden. Right. You're doomed. A hard pogoing it was, too hard for the vicar indeed, who plunged from his uh, instruments into the ditch, breaking his leg and necessitating the future wearing of a surgical boot for the rest of his days and this story. <laughs> uh, the travelling circus, which you may have noticed to the left of the hill. Here they come which... now. <laughs> <laughs> but by oh. some miracle. <laughs> The vicar leapt from the ditch onto his pogo stick straight towards the telephone kiosk. But there was a lorry coming the other way. And just before he got there, the lorry went across him and the vicar shouted... <laughs> <laughs> the vicar shouted, "Arg!" He'd been struck a side swipe, a glancing blow by the lorry and fell back into the ditch right on top of a female contortionist. What? <laughs> good evening, madam, he cried. Good evening. Good evening, good evening, he said to the telephone operator, having staggered to his feet. I'm trying to get through to the leg repairer at the next village. But he said, well, unfortunately... <laughs> oh! <laughs> the hole in one. Oh, good heavens. He said, turning to the female contortionist, not only have I lost the line that I was speaking on, I shall never use a telephone again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but he lied. <laughs> Pickers don't lie, Into the beast. telephone box. He said, can I have emergency? Nine, nine... <coughs> You've cut me off, the vicar said, dismounting from his pogo stick. <laughs> Brilliant. I don't know how you did it. Or why. Now, we come to the next round, which is rather wittily entitled Playing Tunes on Instruments You Can't Play. Very good. Each team will play a well-known tune in turn on the Swanee Whistle, and the other team will have to try and identify it. We're going to start with Tim and Willie, and you begin. Tim and Willie, you begin with your tune. Give us a, a G. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A one, two, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> Well, the audience obviously got it. Now, what about you, Barry? It's, and it's one of the Mozart violin concertos, but... <laughs> yes, but which one? I don't know which number. Oh, it was number 48. 48? Yeah. Well... No, Popularly yeah. known as Swanee, How I Love You. Is Not that your final popularly. answer? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Da, 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 da. Oh! 
I thought it was a nose flute. I'm sorry about the next player. Is that it? It was it, Barry. Looks at audience. Audience, look back. <laughs> at this point, Chairman is around. Barry's crazy. got it. Colin Sell's going to... Barry's got it, you think? Let's see if he's got it. Oh, Colin sorry, Sell, will you play their tune on the piano properly? Oh, well, in that case, I have no idea what it was. <laughs> and it's Barry oh, Cry no, who Barry. gets the bonus point oh. there for having no idea what it was. And <laughs> you weren't like this very much. <laughs> Sorry we have a short that. pause. I'd better explain to you listening at home. Graham and Barry have had to go over and get the swanny whistles from uh, Tim and Willie, dip them in a glass of carbolic, which is on my desk here, <laughs> and they're now going to play their tune, which goes like this. Oh. This is damp. <laughs> so would you be if I'd just blown down your... <laughs> <laughs> from you mean reading promises. my mail again? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. I can see from her, I can see from her sympathetic actions that at least one lady in the audience has, uh, has guessed what that one was. <laughs> can you, Timothy and William? Well, she's I a defrocked it... Dagnum girl piper. It's easy yeah. for her. <laughs> it sounded like the clangers learned brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, did we get it? No, mm. nearly. Is well, it on a nautical theme by any chance? No, no. I no. spotted bits of a life on the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I recognised a at one stage, nothing to do with sirens or the Second World War. No. It seemed longer than the Second World War. But that... <laughs> I don't think we'll get this, do you, will you? Did I don't think you're going to get it often. Colin Sell, you'll have to come in, and the lady in the audience, perhaps you can help out as well. <laughs> Myself. That puts Graham and Willie ahead, and we go on to the next round. That was, incidentally, the stripper, as you probably recognise. Was it really? Yes, was it, it was. Really? <laughs> now then. I, got off soon, I, don't I think. thought you'd just got hot hump. <laughs> we ha it's bad penny blues. Come I'm on. I'm very impressed, hump, too. <clears throat> we have uh, the game now, which is called Double Feature, and it starts from the uh, premise that the... the uh, international film industry is broke and on its uppers and therefore for economic reasons new films have to be remakes of pairs of old films and I want you to hear the resulting titles and I'll award points for well uh, the usual and the usual number of points too. Tim, how about you? <laughs> um, yes, well they've, uh, they, what they're making up is a mixture of Day for Night, Robin Hood and Alice doesn't live here anymore. And the producer, actually, interestingly enough, is Robin Day, and it's in his bid for political <laughs> honours. <laughs> and the film is called Day for Knighthood, or Robin doesn't live here anymore, so there. <laughs> Very contrived. <laughs> Ten marks there from, for the audience's rapturous reception of that one. Barry, thank you, Barry. Mummy. Well, uh... 
I've got a bumper bundle, but self-praise is no recommendation. Um, <laughs> Oh dear. Well, I've I... taken five old films, actually, Hump, with your indulgence. If I could crave your indulgence, or would you rather crave you your own? the same number I've of got marks, I've Five films. What did you do in the war, Daddy? I'll be your sweetheart. I do, I do. Be my love, and ladies who do. And it's a new film called Dooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> yes, 16 marks for you. And Willie? This is a, a huge saving, this one represents. It's Royal Flash, Equus, <laughs> Donkey's Ears, The Four Horses of the Apocalypse, Siller at the Palace, and they're putting it all together as racing from Windsor. <laughs> and Willie's won that round without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> this is where in my script it says that I go home so that uh, the teams can get on with their announcements, but I, as you may have noticed, I went home five minutes ago. <laughs> the teams are going to give their announcements now for the arrivals at the oh, yeah. Astronomer's Vault. Oh, 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 oh. Snap your garter now at Mr. and Mrs. Aza and their nudist daughter, Stark Aza, sometimes known as the Great Bear. <laughs> Please, will you not laugh, as they're very sensitive. <laughs> At right. Mr. and Mrs. Ons of Light Years Away and their daughter Millie Ons of Light Years Away. <laughs> we kept our promise. <laughs> Hold your sides <laughs> as you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Lobservatory at Greenwich and their son Roy Lobservatory at Greenwich. <laughs> Wandering, lonely as a cloud, Such the short sighted dwarf, J. Arthur Jodrell Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Suspend, if you will, your critical <laughs> All the way from Wales, Mr. and Mrs. Leebody and their son, Evan Leebody. <laughs> A similar guest arrives, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. System and their daughter, Stella, who with her heavenly body is the current Miss Universe. <laughs> Well, it's true. Rubbish, but here. Yeah. <laughs> Rubbish, maybe, from Ireland. Mr. and Mrs. O. Centauri and their son, Alpha Centauri. <laughs> and his friend, Irish Stew. <laughs> oh, order round the room for the cabaret. Provided... Irish Stew. Yes. Oh, don't forget the Irish Stew. It's, <laughs> me it's meaty, all right. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Asteroid reaction. <laughs> I trod on that, and I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome, please? Off before you go home. Order before anybody the room. else brings them in, Mr. and Mrs. Cope and their son, Horace. <laughs> <laughs> Order round the room for the cabaret, Sir William Haley and his comets. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, they're going well. Swanny whistles. Here come Mr. and Mrs. Tonight and their Russian princessly daughter, Anya Stasia Tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Quick as you can, Humph. Mr. Stop. and Mrs. Zodiac and their children, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. It's not funny, but by golly, it finishes off the programme. <laughs> right on cue. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I should tell you that the scores at this point have reached an interesting point. Graham and Barry are 66, William Tim 99. Or conversely... <laughs> we'll be back again next time, and until then, from all of us, goodbye. Barry Fryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs>
Hello, and welcome to the panel game of which it has been said. As usual, we have two teams opposing each other. They are on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Ruston. <laughs> and if you don't uh, discover the rules as we go along, bad luck. Our first round is called Sounds Pe Peculiar. We play a sound effect, and you have to identify it, teams. And Tim Brooke Taylor, we start with you. Here's your sound effect. <laughs> How distasteful and dis <laughs> disgusting and how <laughs> true. Um... <laughs> That was the Avon lady calling at a very inconvenient moment. <laughs> right, you get one mark for your side. Now, Barry, here's your sound effect. lady having left uh, <laughs> and who's to blame her that was a vestal virgin tripping over a sacrificial sheep yeah. landing on Nero who promptly set fire to Rome <laughs> <laughs> Yes, of course, as the audience has uh, realised, Barry was absolutely wrong. Now, Willie Rushton, <laughs> here's your um, sound effect. That was the hunchback of Notre Dame saving a penalty. <laughs> Graham Garden, here... Tommy Lawton played play. the Hunchback of Notre Dame, actually. <laughs> Ronnie Corbett played the other Graham Garden, here are your sound effects. <laughs> I'd like to reassure listeners at home that when Hum says it's my sound effect, it's not actually... <laughs> Could have been mine uh, earlier. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that was. It wasn't enjoying the peak of health. Um, I think it's probably the sound of um, one of the lesser-known British trades or crafts, the old custard tuner, tuning custard. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yes. Here's where I uh, uh, introduce the round that's played at the end of the programme. The teams have all the rest of the programme to think of silly names for people arriving at the geographer's ball. The geographer's ball. And we hurry along to the next round. In this round, uh, the aim is to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and to close the series in one line. Colin Serb will play the theme music and I shall award points for bad taste. Barry... <laughs> I want you to, to uh, put the, uh, a brisk end to the Sweeney. Regan? That dress doesn't even fit you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the last episode. <laughs> Well done, Barry. Willie. <laughs> Use the expression loosely. The programme that you have to put an end to is the money programme. Anybody got 5p for the metre? Oh. <laughs> um. <coughs> <coughs> 
Another well, bad day for the Pirates. Both teams are running neck and neck at the moment, somewhere down near the bottom of the scoreboard. <laughs> we go on with Graham. Will you put an end once and for all to the BBC News, Graham? And tonight the news is read by Angela Rippon. Those of you who wrote in to congratulate Angela on carrying on with the news after her earring fell off, get a load of this. <laughs> Tailed a little in the second well, that act. that does little to, to stop the run on the pound. So we'll go over to Tim Brooke Taylor now, and you've got to put an end once and for all to Tom and Jerry. Oh. Looks a mussy, Thomas. You is a good cat. Now go and put it in the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks to Tim Brooke Taylor's effort, both teams now have 84 marks. <laughs> we go on to the ad lib poem, oh. which the teams always look forward to every week. <laughs> I'm glad somebody does. In, uh, oh, the, the, what happens in this round, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, each team, ha I give them the opening line of a poem, and each team have to, has to keep going until I press the buzzer, and then a member of the opposing team has to take over. And this goes on, as you know, until we reach uh, a fine artistic conclusion. Now, the first line of your poem that you've got to start with, Willie Rushton, is as follows. In crimson coat I sallied forth to the weasel catcher's hunt. <laughs> How good it was to be back again. I'd just been up the front. <laughs> but here I was, back on leave, my khaki coat thrown off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thrown off. <laughs> How nice to be back home once more, although I had a cough. <laughs> I'd caught a cold in the Dardanelles. <laughs> An unlucky place to catch it. <coughs> However, there was a doctor there, and he was able to patch it. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. Now, some of you may wonder where the Dardanelles is now. It's where it always has been, friends. But listen to me. How? I tell you of a tale so strange about a soldier bold. Four foot three and tattered. And some said, far too old. <laughs> but my word, how he struggled against the vicious Turk. <laughs> Although at times, he did admit he felt a bit of a burk. <laughs> and out there fighting gallantly for country, king and ma, he often thought, I'd like to be a great big showbiz star. <laughs> and so one day he sallied forth to great big London town. And he went up, and he went up, and then he went down and down. <laughs> he became a great big star. In England, he was famous. He changed his name immediately in the phone book, O'Kelly, Seamus. <laughs> Yeah, right, now we're going to do another one now, starting with Graham Garden. I'm going to give you a line, Graham, to start with. Right. Two balls to go, the bowler thought. <laughs> Looking for his hat trick. <laughs> I'll dedicate this first one <laughs> to the blessed Saint Patrick. <laughs> he took his run up, strong and fast and pounded toward the crease. He loosed. <laughs> oh. He loosed never the know. fast one, there and then. <laughs> oh, oh, cried his little niece. <laughs> it went so fast that some men say it was the fastest ever went. But I've heard tell that W.G. Grace played a faster one in Kent. <laughs> now, people who were there that day said they could not believe 
that a bowler could run up like that and whiz the ball out of his sleeve. <laughs> they swear that it was true. They do. Nay, 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 others cry. <laughs> he threw... What, what was your line, sorry, Barry? Nay, 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 others cry. Others cry. Such as it was. The ball bounced on the bowler's boot and went for 16 boys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Went for 16 by. So! <laughs> there it goes, spectators cried, nibbling their pork pies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk of it for many a year, and tears will mist their eyes as they sit in the ingle nook of pub and friendly tavern. Right. Uh, <laughs> we're always in the corner. You can see my old friend Gavin. This is very boring. To go on for f for heaven for friend. And so I am happy to say what? this is the very end. <laughs> Right, that's the end of that particular one, but we have another poem for you here. And, Tim, you're going to start oh, this one. Oh, oh, good. And your opening line is, uh, this one should go very briskly. Up in the BBC canteen, the plat du jour was Risso. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very unpleasant, <laughs> so I smashed the chef in the kiss hole. <laughs> He was very offended, because it was his greatest dish. He said, you have offended me, sir. It was my greatest wish to serve plat du jour so fine that all would cheer and shout. Oh, but no. Oh. No, that you have complained, sir. I must throw the blighter out. <laughs> so out went the old Rissel. Or Rissel. So out went the old Rissel. Why am I doing... I'm going to Pam Ayers now. <laughs> <laughs> That's three of them. So it went... So I... Oh! So that went the old Rissol. Oh, no need to have the operation. And landed now. in Pall Mall. <laughs> and there it was run over by an extraordinary gal whose name was Beatrice Chumley. A pretty-looking lass. <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. Tim? <laughs> To see her limp on one good leg, it really was a farce. She limped along, did this fine girl. <laughs> I forget her name. <laughs> it was Patricia Chumley, for shame, for shame, for shame. <laughs> and Barry, of course, wins that round, and we go on to the next one. <laughs> This is the round called Good News and Bad News. In this round, one team has to announce a piece of good news and the others have to provide the accompanying bad news. We then go back to the first team who have to see the good side of it and so on and on and on and on. <laughs> Graham, you're going to start the first one. All right. Here's the good news. I've just got engaged. Here's the bad news to me. <laughs> That is bad news. <laughs> um, very nice. I give it three weeks. Uh, the, the good news is um, they agreed not to have any children. <laughs> bad news is it's a bit late to say that. <laughs> The secret's out. And the good news is we're going to name it after the chairman. Oh, <laughs> crawler. The bad news is he is, in fact, the father. <laughs> that cancels your marks out for a start. <laughs> Willie, will you start with the good news now? Um... Raquel, good news, good news. Raquel Welch came into my bedroom last night. <laughs> Bad news, I wasn't there. Uh, good news, I was in Bridget Bardo's bedroom. Bad news, she wasn't there. <laughs> good
Good news, Jane Fonda was. <laughs> Bad news, so is Henry. Oh. <laughs> Good news, uh, I always fancied him rotten. <laughs> Well, you stop there. Stopped on the brink. Having stopped you on the brink, we're now going on to another one which Barry starts. Good news, Barry. I've had a facelift. <laughs> Hard to think of bad news, don't you? It is. Good grief. Bad news. Um, it's been lifted so far, you've now got eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the good news is you can now talk through your hat. <laughs> uh, bad news um, is when you take your hat off, you spill soup on your tie. <laughs> and the good news is that's not my tie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tim, are you going to start with the good news? Uh, uh, I have got some good news here. <laughs> it's a bra brick moonlight nicht the nicht. Apologies. And me. the bad news is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> many a. Many a. Muckle makes a muckle. <laughs> Good news. We may have had a couple of drinks on Saturday. Glasgow belongs to me, eh, eh. <laughs> Sorry about the walking stick. The bad news is I've never liked Welshmen. <laughs> Right, now here's a chance for both teams to score a innumerable number of marks. In this round, the aim is not to amuse the audience. Each panellist, in turn, says a word, and the first one who gets a laugh from the studio audience is disqualified. <laughs> and the remaining three continue the game in rotation until only one survives. And to that one, I award all the remaining points in my dispensation. Tim, you're going to start this round. Cup. <laughs> oh, flip! <laughs> oh, please! Can't have a second word. Which word do you want? Cup, flip, or please? Please didn't get. <laughs> please didn't get a laugh. So I'll, I'll be generous and give you that one. Thank you. Hope. And we go on to Barry. Plank. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Did you, Willie? No, no, nothing. Tremor. Cold. Oh. Graham? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Cold. Well, doing Max Wall suddenly. Tim, <laughs> please be quiet. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> oh, no. Saucer. Ah. <laughs> oh, he I'm tell sorry. Ah. He capped the first one, didn't he? <laughs> That's it's the way I tell him. <laughs> we use them. Well, Tim Brooke Taylor, unable to control his flashing wit, has been disqualified. And we know. Who's been taken out of the studio? <laughs> Still flashing. Yeah. <laughs> Not very witty. We go on with you, Barry. Theodolite. Really? Melvin Bragg. <laughs> Melvin Bragg's I was just not testing that. I've always found him very amusing. I just wanted to see if anybody else did. He's not a word, though, is he, Melvin? Well, he is a word, but not what you People talk say about here. a Melvin Bragg. No, they do. It's not it's one Houston. word, that Will, surely. It's rhyming slang. Part of the country. And, Melvin yeah. Bragg. Quicker word, it's rhyming slang. Yeah. Blow what? your nose on a Melvin. Yeah. But what? Get your Melvin out. Blow your nose. Your <laughs> I would draw my buzz. I'm cool, sorry, she needs which is very painful oh, in the circumstances. I'm sorry. Just, I'm just You're never a Melvin alone Bragg. with a Melvin. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. The Daily Mirror is a Melvin. Welcome to the Brains Trust. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Garden, your word. Word. Willie. Abattoir. <laughs> Grey. Undertaker. 
I'm afraid, Graham, that was guaranteed to get you out of it. So it's now between uh, Barry on the one hand and Willie on the other. And we're going to start with Willie. <laughs> Best of luck, Willie. Please don't laugh, audience. Please, please. <laughs> All the points in Hump's dispenser. You're such a bad loser. <laughs> Come on, Willie, you can do it. If you bored me often enough, you can bore me. <laughs> <laughs> Not deep enough. <laughs> Dusk. Plod. <laughs> Raven. <laughs> Bollards. <laughs> And for some unknown reason, that made the audience laugh. So Willie Rushton is the winner of that round. We move on to the round now, which is called Double Feature. And this round starts uh, on the premise that the uh, international film industry is on his uppers. And uh, for economic reasons, new films have to be remakes of pairs of old films. And I want to hear the resulting titles. And I shall probably not award any points for this round. We're going to start with Willie Rushton. This is a poverty-stricken rehash of Shoes of the Fishermen, They Died with Their Boots On, Please Don't Eat the Daisies, and 39 Steps. It's either the Michael Foote story, <laughs> or No Socks Please, We're British. <laughs> <laughs> or a load of old cobblers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you weren't going to get a point, but I'll give a point for that. Uh, Graham... How about yours? Yes, I just said they're going to remake um, The Sign of the Cross and the Colossus of Rhodes and call it Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> but there may be no truth in it. Tim Brooke Taylor. Yes, the, the makers of Ice Station Zebra and the Planet of the Apes have got together to make brass monkeys. <laughs> Right, Barry. Uh, I saw a mammoth bill, hum, for mammoth. Um, went with a mammoth, actually, but that's neither here nor there. This was uh, a lot of films together in a sort of festival. Um, Don't go near the water, get Carter, you're a big boy now in the Nick Curse of the Vampire in a Lonely Place, and Oliver Twist. And the new film is called Don't Get Your Knickers in a Twist. <laughs> <laughs> it works if you analyse it. It's not funny, but it works. <laughs> well... Judging from the response of the audience, Barry wins that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, ask the teams now to announce their arrivals at the Geographer's Ball. Mr. and Mrs. Land and their rather innuendo-prone son, Hinter Land. <laughs> <laughs> Please, would you welcome before anybody else brings him in? Mr. and Mrs. Pelago and their son... <laughs> and their son, Charles. Ah. And his sister, Archie. <laughs> Through the French windows, suddenly, a horse projection. <laughs> With his French mother, Mayor Kate Horse Projection. <laughs> oh... Please. An easier one. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Sippy. <laughs> oh, yes. Mr. and Mrs. Ismus and their father. <laughs> <laughs> Please, will you welcome the timid Miss Ellen, who has arrived to announce the publication of a book describing her hard times under the title of The Straits of Madge Ellen. <laughs> All you oceanographers, King Neptune and Ethel Merman. <laughs> <laughs> Please will you welcome Mr. and Mrs. Orca and their Balearic Island daughters, Madge Orca and Min Orca. <laughs> Please will you welcome the very shy. <laughs> Suspend, if you will, your critical faculties, because here all the way from Australia are Mr. and Mrs. Arif. And their son, the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> Upon my soul, oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Upon my soul, the Gossesies. 
<laughs> and their daughter, Sarah Gossessee. <laughs> Isn't that oh, Theo Dolite? <laughs> Oh, Zara, sorry. I don't even know where it is. No, it wasn't, Theo. Please, it was will just you a welcome trick of the light. Someone who's not very funny, but quite clever. <laughs> no, not even clever. Mr. and Mrs. Nels. Nels. And their anti-artistic movement son, Dada Nels. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, madam. You come from there as well. <laughs> Who was that lady over there? Oh, I don't know. I'll ask her. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Streel and their son, Terry Streel. Terrestrial, but he's rather drunk at the moment, I think. <laughs> Will you please welcome Mr. and Mrs. Tuscale and their explosive son, Rick Tuscale. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Dog lovers, Mr. and Mrs. Globe and their terrier, Firma. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, oh. ladies and gentlemen, you all... The horse projections have just left. <laughs> <laughs> this is but only to make way for our agricultural guests, the well-known farmer Gusta, the pig breeder, <laughs> who's brought a couple of his pigs with him, the famous what, boar, what? Doe, and Sow Sampton. Oh! <laughs> Welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Eanes and their son and daughter-in-law, the Philip Eanes. <laughs> And Coral Sea and Montevideo. <laughs> <laughs> and also their friends, Mr. and Mrs. Ease Canal and their daughter, Sue Ease Canal. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you'll all be wanting to know who's won this week's contest. We'll be back with you again uh, next time. <laughs> and until that time, from all of us, it's goodbye now. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs> We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to the programme which has done for radio what the eruption of Vesuvius did for Pompeii. <laughs> As usual, two teams oppose each other. On my left, Barry Crown and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on their left, Tim Brooke Taylor and <laughs> Willie Rushton. The rules of the game changed so much uh, over the series that I haven't yet caught up with them. So we'll go on to the first round, which is the round called Last Episode. And in this round, the aim is to put the last nail in the coffin of a long-running radio or television show and close the series in one line. Colin Sell will play the theme music or some appropriate music, and I shall award some points somewhere along the line. Tim Brooke Taylor, you're going to start with this one, and we want you to put the last line to The Brothers. Edward, David. Yes, Brown. Mother's pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, your one is within these walls. Who left that door open? <laughs> Willie Rushton, the, the show that we want you to kill off in one line is The World at War. We interrupt this ceaseless programme to announce the outbreak of World War Three. <laughs> <laughs> and 
about Graham. Dr. Harry Vaseline and his music of the Mendips. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Garden. Oh. Uh, the show that we want you to kill off is Gardener's Question Time. Well, I'd like to ask the panel how best I should feed this triffid. Down, boy. Down. <laughs> <laughs> And with uh, no, Barry and Graham Harry Vaseline Justin. and his music of the Mendip. <laughs> <laughs> with Barry and Graham just marginally ahead, we go on now to uh, the point where I tell the teams that they have to think of uh, names for people arriving at the Electrical Goods and Allied Industries Ball. <laughs> you have the whole of the rest of the programme to think of those. Have you got them down? Electrical Sounds goods like and the rest of the program. Allied Industries Ball. So we go on to the next round, which is called Sound Charades. In this one, one team has to make noises and the other team has to guess what they mean. The audience let into the secret and can help by applauding when they're getting warmer and doing the other thing when they're not. <laughs> got that? Right. <laughs> You're going to perform your charade, uh, first of all, Graham Garton and Barry Cryer. And I want you to tell the opposite team whether this is a play, a film, a book or what it is. It's a book and a film. Book and a film. A secret voice will now, a mystery voice, will now tell those of you at home what it is. The Omen. The Omen. <laughs> Barry and Graham, uh, uh, are you, uh, how many syllables and how are you going to do it? There are two words on the card and we're going to do them both at once. Oh. 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 Uh-oh. Oh. 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 <laughs> Love thy neighbour. <laughs> Just happens I know who you live next door to. <laughs> the colonel. <laughs> um, as opposed to O. Oh. O. Oh. The O oh women. Was that yes, O oh men? Yes, yes. Oh yes. Men. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> So now, uh, Tim and Willie, you're going to do the uh, acting, and uh, will you tell them what it is, book, film, what? When the boat comes in. When the boat comes in. Well, it's, it's television, basically, but there is also a book. And television, basically, and also a book. Right, the Five mystery words. voice has told everyone at home what it is, and uh, how are you going to do it? How many syllables? Well, there are five words. I haven't counted the syllables. Five syllables. Five oh. syllables, right. Oh, and we'll do five it, unisyllabic words. We'll do it yes. all, all at once, if we may. Go on. Oh, feel free. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, in that case, pray enter. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, very good. Right, we'll do our next one now. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I don't want to guess it. I think guessing would ruin it. It's not gone with the wind. It. Run and run. Guessing when, would ruin that. Um, when the bird comes in. Yes. <laughs> Graham, you got that right, so you've earned yourself another chance to do another charade. No, I win. Uh, what's this one going to be? A television series. Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery voice has told everyone at home, and they all broke into a spontaneous cheer. Blackboard. Blackboard goes better than we do. <laughs> how many syllables and how are you going to do it? Uh, four syllables. Three words. Four syllables, three words. Well, that's a clue. <laughs> and right, we're going to start now. We're doing them all at once, as always. Pattern of these things. Right. Here we go. Hey, I say, isn't that... Isn't that Rob Redford over there, star of Downhill Racer? And I do believe, good heavens, yes, he's going to sing. We've been together now for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. <coughs> the end. Van der Velk. <laughs> so warm, so oh. warm. Robert Redford, Downhill Skier. Star. It's Dutch, isn't it? 
The Dick Van Dyke Show. <laughs> How do you get Dutch? I've been together now for 40. Oh. I don't care a lot too much for my old Dutch. Dutch. Double Dutch. Dutch. Holland. If we're getting cold, would you just hiss, please? I think it's the heating in here. I'm not... <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen and geese, thank you. Can you give us a clue? Another yes, give clue. them a clue. You've said we'll give you the answer. Words. That's as good a clue as any. <laughs> You've said all the words. You haven't you got have. it. Stars at night. No. Stars? Stars? No, that's yeah. also not. Stars. <laughs> stars on Sunday. No. Oh, oh it's lovely. Isn't it? Patrick Moore's The Miriam. No. no. Stars, stars at night. Stars at night. Stars. 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 Starsky and Dutch. Ah. And that, ah. that puts a uh, young lady in the second row ahead of all of us. <laughs> right, Tim and Willie, it's your turn to do one last round in this one, so uh, will you tell the uh, opposing team what it is? It's a film. And was a telly. Oh, that's true. Film and was it? Uh, it's what? four syllables, three words. Twelve angry men. Twelve angry men. Right, the mystery voice has informed everyone at home what it is. Four syllables, and, uh, three words. How are you going to do it? Um, pretty well. In Hungarian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to do the, the all together, huh? How nice. Are you going to start, will you, or am I? No, you start. All right. Look, I'm... Look, I brought the whole team to play football, that's all. I am a customs officer. Lower your trousers, please. Hey! <laughs> hey, boss, do I have to lower my trousers? Lower I'm fed up your with underpants. Hey, boss, do I... It's... it's it, hey. it, I, oh. Why have we got to do this? We've come to no, play football. You are. Hey, we're all <laughs> bloody annoyed. <laughs> That'll do. We're, we're very cross, all of us, football team and our manager. I put an X on your white That was pathetic. Is that it? That's it. Late comers yeah. at the Allen Ball. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a football team and their manager. Four syllables, three words. So easy when you know, isn't it? It's so easy when you know, yes. What are we talking about now? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> quiet flows the don. That's cricket. Oh, right. Filthy. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are they getting warm, audience? We're not getting anywhere, really. Why the man? Is Don relevant? What's the manager got? Twelve angry men. <laughs> ah, good lad. Very good. No, I'm sorry, it was in fact the dirty dozen. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and with that fleeting reference to the listeners to this programme, we carry on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Got up. Well, that's We're a round doing. called Pick Up Song. In this round, a member of one team starts singing a song and then stops on the word oh. in the lyric, one word in the lyric. And a member of the opposing team has to then sing a different song, starting with that word. Who's going to start? Timber of <laughs> Sorry, do, do we, we do it as a team or do we have to do it individually? Yeah, as a team. As, uh, do it as a team, if you like. Yes, please. Willie knows songs. <laughs> Only backwards. In Gilly Gilly, Ossen, Pfeffer, Katzenella, Bolan, Bogan, by the sea. <laughs> See, that doesn't. See you again whenever spring breaks through oh, what again. Doing? What are you doing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at you for approval. I was so. Well, you got it. You've got it. I echoed you. It's the William Tim, will you take it up on the word spring? <laughs> spring, spring. We'll be spring. a little late this year. It's two different songs. <laughs> but then, yeah. so will all. Here we go again. Happy as can be. All good friends and neighbours. Hey, all the happiest, happiest pervert in town. <laughs> <laughs> town. Upon the Swanee <laughs> River, far, far, 
far away and long ago. <laughs> oh, he does know them backwards. They <laughs> uh, uh, had a song which went quite slow. You're not meant to make them up. <laughs> I've never heard of your Oh, I see. Uh, far. Far, far, afar, a long, <laughs> far, a long, long way to go. Uh, far, far, so in a world of their own. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the tune of Far Down Below. <laughs> far, far, far down below, fetch a bucket. <laughs> bucket. A hole in my um, Dear Liza, dear Liza, <laughs> there's a hole in my bucket. Dear Liza, a hole. Hole. Um, <laughs> happy, holy am... <laughs> happy holy day. Happy holy day. Hole. I think we've been at hole. Hole, meet again. Hole. Um, don't know war. Don't know win. <laughs> Sound like Russell Harty. <laughs> hole. 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 And I... I'm a hole of you. Why not take hold of me? <laughs> Me. 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 A, a, a name I call myself. Ah. <laughs> a long, long way to run. Run. Rabbit run. run. Rabbit run. 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 He's older than he looks, you know. I don't think Rabbit. we can improve on that. We stopped on run. You stopped on, on run. Oh, you wanted, you wanted, you wanted to, to take it up on run. on rabbit. Yeah. If you carry on with run. Oh, run. We stopped on run, didn't we? Yeah. Well, <laughs> carry on on run. Oh. <laughs> it's too easy, really. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in the rules against repeating a tune that's been sung no, before. No, that's very true, Hum. Very true indeed. Run. You sit here all night singing Run, Rabbit, Run. <laughs> <laughs> you let to blast your tiny horn. That was my idea, but you've obviously oh, stopped yeah. it. Oh. I think after the uh, intellectual strain of that round, we ought to go on to one that's easy. So we're going to do one of our ad lib poems. Oh, no. The teams are going to make up a poem. And each team member has to keep going in until I press this buzzer. And then a member of the opposing team takes over. And this goes on until we stop. When did the tea bar take over? I'm going there to audible pass to up. Tim Brooke Taylor the opening line of the first poem, because we probably have time to do two. Tim, of all the methods known to man to control the population... <laughs> the quiet. best has been used by far... By a man who is a nation. Pardon? By a man who is a nation. <laughs> His name is Umba Lumba Boom. <laughs> His mother was quite drunk. They were on a ship one day, and believe me, it was sunk. <laughs> it sank into the briny deep. Nay, 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 nay. You cr You what? <laughs> you cr you crow <laughs> you cry I've been on quite a few ships I've never seen one sink so so far into the briny deep it struck the earth below and out we were us mariners pitched to sink or swim you know but there upon the horizon, there arose a coral isle, and we swam out towards it in freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> These sailors, they had coats of blue. In fact, they were brand new. They... <laughs> and bell bottoms. So, so gay and bright, they received... Compliments from Danny DeRue. <laughs> oh, Danny was a sailor once, you may have heard it said. <laughs> Indeed, I know him very well. I used to make his bed. <laughs> well, all the points go to Willie on that one, and we'll do another one now. 
a, a clip one here. Yeah, was autobiography. <laughs> and we're going to start, uh, Barry, you off with this one. The MO lined the rookies up in order to inspect them. <laughs> <laughs> he was a man who ruined them, who ravished them and wrecked them. <laughs> he was a stern and vicious man with boots that shone like the sun. And my word, when he said cough to you, the best thing to do was run. <laughs> he had a vice like grip he had. He should have been a vet. He had a grip like vice as well, which <laughs> terrorised him yet. But all the lads in his platoon looked up to this great man. I must admit, I am myself a little bit of a fan. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I myself, I went down to the docks. Not to see the ships, of course. <laughs> <laughs> to complain about, <laughs> complain about my socks. <laughs> they were pure army issue. Of a texture, rough and grainy. They used to rot about your feet when singing in the rainy. <laughs> but back now to the barracks. <laughs> and back to meet my squad. I always like to meet them. <coughs> Training in the quad... For we had taken over a college in the town. In the what, sorry? Town, of course. Uh, that was a time ago, before we were sent down. I'm finding it difficult to rhyme. Oh. <laughs> Surely we are running out of time. <laughs> but no, let's... <laughs> Tell our story no. with its sordidness and slime. I think that's three I'm rhymes. Never mind. <laughs> we were three jolly undergrads <laughs> of college fame and sport. We... I was up for a time at Wadham until I was finally caught. <laughs> I was reading for the porn squad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a third in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> I got a fourth in Latin and I couldn't sit down for a week. We go straight on to a round called Straight Face, and this round the aim is not to amuse the audience. <laughs> Each panellist in turn says a word, and the first one who gets a laugh from the studio audience here is disqualified. If you get a laugh from the people at home, you, you are banned from the programme for life. The remaining three uh, contestants continue the game in rotation until only one survives, and that one wins. Or loses. <laughs> We're going to start with you, Graham Garden. Bottle. Brick. Cringe. Last. Potter. <laughs> Graham, you fall out of that one having brought the. One downmanship. Brought the house down with Potter. Yeah. <laughs> And it's for you to start now, Tim Brooke Taylor. Please. Cucumber. <laughs> oh, it's the way you tell them. <laughs> and that's the end of you, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's Barry, you and Willie are left now. 
hat episode. Bombazine. <laughs> Go on, I didn't hear anything, will you? Oh, good, good. What a relief. Sound. Euphony. Mm, it wasn't that euphony. <laughs> <laughs> Charades. Game. Pick. Pardon? Pick. Taught. Song. Fur below. Add. Russ. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry having surrendered that one <laughs> without, a, without a fight, that leaves Willie. I just want to see whether you can get a mark, Willie, by carrying on. Lib. Poem. Straight. Face. <laughs> it's true. Late. <laughs> Covers. I'm just reading out the program. He hasn't got a titter. <laughs> Okay, well, you've your dead mark. horse. So that's how you avoided getting a laugh. You earned half a mark for that. Thank you. This is the point in the programme where oh, I hooray. go home now so that I can miss your announcements for the arrivals at the Electrical Goods and Allied Industries Ball. Who's going to open? I haven't got any, but you've got any? Television celebrity just entered. I think he's part of the cabaret. It's actor Frank Windsor from Softly, Softly Task Force with his new tough image, better known now as John Killer Watt. <laughs> Oh, he hasn't brought anybody with him. <laughs> Sneaking in under his skirts are Mr. and Mrs. Rater and their oh. daughter, Jenny Rater, <laughs> and her vole, Tage. <laughs> hello, hello, that's two hello. <laughs> yes, there's Crystal Set and her cat's whisker. <laughs> and close behind her, those young trendies. Mr. and Mrs. Ode and their daughters, Anode and Cathode. <laughs> oh, and Ray Tube. <laughs> Please, will you adjust your laughing gear to welcome <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ontel Hold and their son, Horace. <laughs> With their friend, he's a bit of a lad. Contrast, the Irish knob. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack Plug, who has good connections, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but over there from the world of music, will you welcome, welcome please? <laughs> welcome, welcome, or even welcome them. Mr. and Mrs. Etri Corda and their daughter Cass Etri Corda <laughs> and her titled friend Duke Box. <laughs> Bend the knee, won't you, now for Lady Kit and her rather diminutive husband, Short Circuit. <laughs> Extraordinary coincidence, someone with the same name <laughs> was about to come in, but he won't. <laughs> Who's down your togas? <laughs> Here come the Eaters and their tiny son, who is also part time Emperor of Rome, <laughs> Pocket Caligulator. <laughs> But enough of them, for here, from Bonnie, Scotland, will you welcome, as always, Mr. and Mrs. Ampfuse and their son, Fife Ampfuse. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, by the way, Humphrey, can we all take our partners for the last vaults before we all go home? No. No, we can't. The band have struck. Ladies and gentlemen, all good things come to an end. But not yet, because here, <laughs> from America, representing the FBI, is J. Edgar Vacuum Cleaner. <laughs> so it's time now to say goodbye from all of us. Isn't Mitzi so... Bushy? Oh. <laughs> oh, bless them, there's AC and DC Waters. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we'll say... <laughs> so we'll say good night. Good night. <laughs> Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs> We present, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to the programme, which a recent poll described as not at all the sort of thing we enjoy in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to introduce the two teams to you on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. The rules of this game uh, are so simple that uh, it's pretty well certain that you'll lose us halfway through the program, but uh, let's go on anyway to the first round, which is called Word for Word. In this round, one of the members of a team says a word, and his partner must say another word totally unconnected with the first and so on. The other team may challenge and try and prove a connection. You'll understand it uh, in a week or two. Now, the first... <laughs> Barry, I want you to start, and your word is word. Gazebo. <laughs> I've had a, a challenge from Tim Brooke Taylor. That's a word. <laughs> uh, we'll put that one to the audience. What do you think? Yeah, no, they don't agree. Yeah. It may be a word, but they don't know it. So. <laughs> Carry on, Barry and Graham. In that case, they're cheating if it's not a word. <laughs> I cheating. agree with you, Humph. You're the chairman. <clears throat> oh. Eric and Ernie have got them, and now he's after Tim one. It's terrible. Leads to <laughs> Tim leads by one mark to nil. Now, Barry, oh. you can start with anything. Trowel. House. That's pathetic. Pick. We'll let it go. <laughs> Pick. What do you say? Pick. Microphone. Lettuce. Glass. <laughs> Rubber. Hydrofoil. A challenge there from Tim Brooke Taylor again. Ah, uh, yes, we all know the expression, let us watch them in rubber on the, through the glass, on a hydrofoil. <laughs> I think yes, you win um... that one. <laughs> and it goes over to you, Tim, to start, and your word is sex. <laughs> Sloth. Oh, challenge there from Barry Cry. I think the connection between sex and sloth is just... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to pry, I'm not going to point it up. But <laughs> I think the audience, knowing Tim, knowing sloths and knowing sex, would draw their own conclusions, and I wouldn't be indelicate enough to pursue this any further, really. <laughs> but I think we'll all agree it's a legitimate challenge. Yeah, but Yes, I agree, but don't let's pursue it. Willie, you start off. <laughs> Now, what I was just thinking then actually did have a lot to do with the last word. Um, so I challenged myself, thereby gaining a point, but I shall pass on. Um, tremolo. Collie wobbles. Greenhouse. Fairy. Map. Goose. <coughs> Sweat. <laughs> I felt I should have challenged him, quite frankly. Loom. Police. Spinthrift. Manhole. <laughs> Perversion. Crumpet. <laughs> Graham Garden challenge. <laughs> he said spendthrift. <laughs> Quite right, yes, you, yeah. you win that one. A lot of people need to. <laughs> no, I know, well, you, you know. take it up now with the word Family corn. Family show. What? The word corn. 
corn. Program. <laughs> Challenge there by Tim Brooke Taylor disallowed. Carry on. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Carry on. Oh, what? Uh, oh. You carry on, Barry. Envelope. Doom. Sprig. Twice. <laughs> Challenge there from Willie Rush. Well, there in the song, Sprig will be a little late this year, <laughs> uh, which is a misprint. Um, <laughs> the Moss sung print. twice by Dame Clara Butt at the opening of the Crystal Palace. Absolutely right. Yes. Thank oh, you. God. And that, with that, you win that round. Thank you. We go on to the next one. What a travesty. Where I introduce the, the game that we play at the end of the programme so that the teams have time to think of silly names for people arriving at the Taylor's Ball. The Taylor's Ball. Start thinking teams. Meanwhile, we go on to the blues round, which everybody knows backwards by now. Uh, each team gives the other a topic for a blues, and they have to improvise it, accompanied on the trombone by Colin Sell. <laughs> and we're going to start with uh, uh, Graham and Barry. Will you give a, a theme to Tim and Willie? Uh, the Princess Anne blues. <laughs> up this morning. <laughs> <coughs> One was feeling a little hoarse. <laughs> One got out of bed on the wrong side, which made Mark a little cross. <laughs> One landed on a photographer at the water jump and said, You! <laughs> Which I must admit is extremely coarse. <laughs> Even in Morse. Yes, you get some marks for that. And now, uh, um, Tim, will you give the other team uh, their theme, please? Yes, we thought the poultry farmer's blues. <laughs> Woke up this morning, <laughs> and then I, I d drove, <laughs> and I drove, off, <laughs> then I drove off down a lonely country track. I ran over a cockerel that was standing there. <laughs> I cried out, oh, alas, and alack. Shabby. So I told the farmer's wife I'd like to replace your cockerel. <laughs> she said, please yourself, the hands around the bag. <laughs> oh. Oh. Life well, judging from the achieved. audience response, that puts you well ahead, uh, Barry and Graham. <laughs> and we go on yeah. to the next round, which is good news and bad news. In this round, one team has to announce a piece of good news, and the others have to provide the accompanying bad news. We then go back to the first team, who say the good news, and then the other team to do the bad news, and then we go back to the other team who do the good news. And if, if it lasts as long as that, I shall press my buzzer. So anyway, we're going to start now with anybody who has any good news, please. Yeah, I've got some good news. This is the last program in this series of I'm Sorry, I Haven't a Clue. Uh, here's the bad news. Uh, the BBC want another series. <laughs> um, the good news, they don't want it for 25 years. <laughs> the bad news, they're recording it next week. <laughs> and the good news is with the new cast. The bad news, they're all Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> Right, can anybody else come up with some good news? I've got some good news. Any minute now, Humph is going to play Bad Penny Blues. <laughs> Bad news, he's going to play it on his teeth. <laughs> good news is he's left them at home. <laughs> Bad news, he's borrowing some from a lady in a second. <laughs> Oh, all right, 
Hello. That one Sounds cancels out all the scores so far, so we start again from scratch. <laughs> and the next round we have is called Sounds Peculiar. And uh, we play a sound effect, and each of you in turn have to identify it. And I shall give you marks for the nearest uh, identification to the correct answer. And as I don't have the correct answer, you're likely to score almost anything. Now, Barry, here's your sound effect. <laughs> Understandable time. reaction. You've had time to consider it now. <laughs> Ralph Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to demonstrate that, can we have the sound effect once again? Windy Woggle, actually. <laughs> Willie Rushton, yours is coming up next, and it sounds like <laughs> oh, this. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> How about that one, Willie? That is... That's Esther Williams discovering a red under the waterbed. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, I'd like to, for the benefit of the Don't audience... Don't you have a snorkel? <laughs> yes, Mr. Williams doesn't know. Can we check on that and hear it again? Oh, he was right. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, that scream anyway. He was indeed, so that puts Willie ahead. Now, Graham, Thank you. here's yours. It's fell me. Um, it sounded like a, a tired and emotional Scotsman mistakenly trying to get a tune out of his sporran. <laughs> Absolutely. Or out of Esther Williams. I <laughs> <laughs> trying to get Esther Williams. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he was out of Esther Williams. That is absolutely correct. And to demonstrate Esther Williams you, out of his let's foreign. hear it again. That's my Esther. <laughs> That's your Williams. <laughs> OK, Graham, you're ahead now. And Tim, Excellent. here's your sound effect. <laughs> oh, I remember this. <laughs> it's Margaret Thatcher laying a foundation spread. <laughs> For your mark, can you give me the exact year? It's still yeah. going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's I can. Oh. oh, good, fine. Will you get your mark? <laughs> and we go on to the next round, which is the old familiar round, tag wrestling. In this oh. round, I give each team the payoff of the story, and I shall then start uh, one of you off telling a story to fit your punchline, and uh, the other team have another punchline to which they have to work. And whenever uh, I feel like it, I shall press this buzzer and the member from the opposite team will have to take up the story and make towards their punchline. I'm going to start by giving you, Barry and Graham, your punchline, and it's this. And that cried the Home Secretary, adjusting his bra. 
is how to stuff a ferret. <laughs> All from today's papers. <laughs> you got that one down? <laughs> is that part of the thing as well? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is how to... Stuff a ferret. Stuff a ferret. ferret. Sorry, Have you got that one down? You got the operative verb there. Tim and Willie, here's yours. Back in the rice pudding, the two nuns sadly dismantled the truss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been reading my mail. <laughs> We're going to start with uh, Graham Garden on this one. Graham, you, want, you have to start the story and head for your punchline. The hallowed corridors of Westminster echoed to the sound of the high heels of the Home Secretary as he hurried from the Cabinet meeting to an emergency sitting in the lower house. <laughs> Willie. Oh! In the distance, he could hear the nuns' chorus <laughs> echoing down the great corridors of power. And he could smell on the air that enticing smell of a stale tapioca, or was it possibly his favourite, the pudding made from rice? Round the corner came a brace of... But the job of the moment was uppermost in his thoughts, so thrusting all these from his mind, he hurried towards the ferret enclosure of the House of Commons. <laughs> For today, he had, in fact, to stuff a ferret on the morn... <coughs> stuff a ferret what? <laughs> I'm not telling you that. <laughs> Well, as he didn't know what he was doing, he felt so no, depressed... No, I didn't know what he was doing. He felt so depressed and shot himself. <laughs> At that moment... <laughs> <laughs> wafting through the air to these two nuns, which we mentioned earlier, was the rice pudding mixture. The <laughs> rice... <laughs> uh, as they walked down Westminster Abbey, they thought to themselves... Well, they said, well, we'll certainly never go back there again. <laughs> Meanwhile, the House of Commons was abuzz with rumours that the Home Secretary had shot himself and missed. <laughs> this, <laughs> this news was only draw drowned by the raucous screams from the kitchen staff who were shouting, Rice pudding's off today! <laughs> and you'll never see it in these parts again! They cry. <laughs> the Home Secretary... Never believe a word you read in the papers, said Sister the Truss to the other, none. <laughs> Staring under the weight of the enormous rice pudding. At that moment, Sister the Truss... <laughs> Unfortunately, at christening, the priest had a speech defect and she was meant to be called Beatrice, but in fact he said, Beatrice, Beatrice. Sister the Truss began to fall apart. At this point, she hurried back to the Little Sisters of the Hernia and, <laughs> and was never heard of again in this story. The Home Secretary, meanwhile, had reached the ferret enclosure. The whole house was assembled for the Maundy Thursday ceremony of stuffing a ferret. The development this year was that the Home Secretary was in drag, as we've already established, but this puffin <laughs> was never revealed to the public. <clears throat> By a strange coincidence, on the other side of the world, a, another sister of the truss was waking up one morning to the smell of rice pudding. <laughs> Strangely enough, at that moment, in came two nuns. Oh. False conviction, false conviction. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to go on? Huh? Oh, thank you. Sister of the truss, immediately sensing the other two nuns were after her pudding, <laughs> concealed, concealed this tasty dessert in a small mammal which was skittering past at the time. Was it a weasel? It, <laughs> deaf to the buzzers going around her, <laughs> picked up this small like ferret it was. <laughs> the cry of the ferret. <laughs> a sort of Stop toot, toot ferret noise. Noise. <laughs> Says Sister of the Trust. To the warder. <laughs> and out of nowhere, she suddenly said, back in the rice pudding, the two nuns sadly dismantled the truck. Robbie! Oh. Robbie! <laughs> and that puts uh, Violence Tim well ahead. out on the terraces. <laughs> that puts you in an almost unassailable position, Tim, then, till after the programme, at any rate. And, uh, <laughs> and there he shall remain. <laughs> we go on now. 
with a, a tune, uh, uh, with a, a round call, Words of One Song to Tune of Another. And I want oh. each team, team to sing the words of one song, guess what, to the tune of another. Oh. And Colin Sell is going to accompany at the piano. Colin Sell, incidentally, is leading at the present time. It remains to be seen how, how he works out on this round. Graham Garden, you're going to start this one. I want you to sing the words of the old folks at home to the tune of the Toreador song. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away, there's where me heart is turning ever. There's where the old folks stay all up and down. The old creation said me I roam Still looking for the old plantation and for the old folks at home Tim Brooke Taylor, your turn now And your words are the words of What Do We Do With a Drunken Sailor To the tune of the T for Two Cha-Cha <laughs> What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning, cha cha cha. Hooray! <laughs> and up she rises. Hooray! And up, up, up she rises. Hooray! And up, 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 up she rises. And then in the morning, cha cha cha. Soaking with the post pipe until he is sober. Soaking with the post pipe all together until he is sober. Soaking with the post pipe until he is sober. Early in the morning, up, up, cha 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 cha. Hooray! And up she rises. Hooray! And up she rises. Hooray! And up she rises. Early in. Incidentally, I've no doubt that you're all playing this game at home. <laughs> good game, good game. Good game. <laughs> Barry Cryer, I'd like you to sing, sing, but I wouldn't like, but I'm in this... <laughs> Your words are the words of Pop Goes the Weasel to the tune of the British Grenadier. I'd like the audience to march to this one. <laughs> a pound of tarpony rice and half a pound of treacle. That's the way the money goes. Ha, 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 goes the weasel, cha-cha-cha. Half a down the city road in and out the east. That's the way the money goes. Pop up goes the weed. Oh. <laughs> right, Willie Rushton now. Yours it, it t takes up a sort of sentimental note now. The words of my melancholy baby to the tune of Dixon of Doc Green. <laughs> Evening, son. <laughs> Come to me, my melancholy bay. Hey, hey, be cuddle up and don't be blue. All, right. All your fears are foolish, fancy maybe. You know, dear, I'm in love with you. Every cloud must have a silver lining. Wait until the sun shines through. Smile, my honey, dear, while I kiss away each tear, or else I shall be melancholy to arrest that man. <laughs> Clearly enunciated, diction of Doc Green. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one mark for Barry there. <laughs> I'll add up the score later on, but meanwhile, let's go on to the last uh, round, which is the point in the programme where the teams give their announcements for the arrivals at the Taylor's Ball. Will you welcome over there? Look at them lurking, <laughs> lurking by the French windows. Mr. Runtz and his wife, Runtz. <laughs> Uh, please, will you welcome from Ireland <coughs> the mix, uh, Mrs. Lean and Cotton, and their son, Terry Lean and Cotton, mix, <laughs> and his friend, 
and his friend, oh. Polyester. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Skirt and their children, Minnie and Maxie? <laughs> Just behind them, sharing a sandwich and a joke, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Pinstripe and their dog, Tooth Check. <laughs> <laughs> Summon up your entire felicitous approbation for none other than Mr. and Mrs. Dressed and their daughter, Natalie Dressed. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor and their son, Timbrook. <laughs> The 50 self, shilling self, Taylor. Self. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone up. All, <laughs> all the way from, from Russia. To varishes, all of them. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Inside Leg. And their little son toddling in. Bless him. Look at him. Now for Yuri Inside Leg. <laughs> Not worth a trip. <laughs> <laughs> but just behind them. Oh, yes. None other than Mr. and Mrs. Are Elastic. Oh, yeah. And their son, Nick Are Elastic. <laughs> That's the sort of stuff you like. <laughs> it's your zip fasteners. <laughs> As here come two fabled rowdies, Jimmy Savile Row, Row. and Brian Cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that must be that trendy pair, Mr. and Mrs. Open, with their stylish daughter with a hand warmer, who we all know affectionately as Muff Flyzer Open. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome, floor. please? They'll only be here for a short time. Glad Rags and Leo Tard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've gone. And all the way from Bonnie, Scotland, oh, hey. welcome Mr. and Mrs. Combinations and their wee lad, Wally Combination. <laughs> Dear ladies and gentlemen, in response to pleading looks from the teams, I have to tell you that we've come Humphrey, to... Humphrey, they're brushing past you. I do apologise on their behalf. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jacket and their well-endowed daughter, double-breasted diner jacket. <laughs> And their man, Tiller. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you and all not be to be ignored, <laughs> the Welsh farming community, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Reese, and their son, the muck spreader, Dunga Reese. <laughs> <laughs> And on that high note, let me tell you that you'll, you'll all be wanting to know the score, and it's been a very tough contest, but they won. And uh, <laughs> so from all of us here, until next time, goodbye now. Barry Fryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and William Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Simon Brett. <laughs>